Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. An executive order has been rumored for drones somewhere out there. We have the Ohio bill that allows shooting drones down, which is not a good thing. And then we have Wing and Flytrex that are partnering together. And then lastly, a successful rescue with a drone. Finally, some good news right there. Let's get to it. And first up, you've probably heard some rumors that President Trump is expected to sign some executive orders about drones. And first up, close your eyes, breathe, relax. The sky is not falling, okay? And so far, the expected doom and gloom, whatever, uh, that we've read in all the different headlines uh, have not happened. Basically, we've had a big nothing burger, but... Uh, with that being said, the orders, which may or may not be signed this Friday now, was expected to be <clears throat> today as we're recording, uh, would reportedly include uh, some updates on Part 108, on Section 2209 from the 2016 Reauthorization Act, on Section 1709 from the 2024 NDAA, and potentially including some Department of Commerce final ruling. And none of these things are actually a big surprise. So that's the reason I'm saying there's no reason to panic. These are things that we have kind of known about for a while, okay? Uh, quickly, I want to break these down for those of you that are not familiar with all these numbers. I don't expect you to be, but I want to reiterate that uh, as of this recording, again, the executive orders have not been announced formally. They haven't been signed. Nothing has happened. More than likely on the day that you'll be watching this video is potentially when we could see something. But Part 108 is the reported name for the Beyond Visual Line of Sight ruling that we expect to see later coming out this year. Uh, not sure what an executive order would actually be doing other than telling the FAA to kind of speed things up. But again, this is kind of a good thing. We need Part 108, okay? No doom and gloom here. Section 2209 was a provision that was a long time ago, almost a decade ago, in the 2016 FA Reauthorization Act, and that was never completed, never implemented. Uh, it requires the FAA to make rules for critical infrastructures and for drone flights around critical infrastructures. So far, that has been left to the states, which has resulted in a kind of patchwork of laws and different types of rules around flying in different places. Now, having some standardization in place using Section 2209 would actually be, again, a good thing, okay? No doom and gloom. Section 1709 from the 2024 NDAA is a requirement for a, a government agency, a government security agency, to complete an audit of DJI and Autel within one year. Now, this was signed in uh, December, if I remember correctly, of 2024. A part of the requirement is also to share the results of the audit with the public, which is a good thing, okay? Uh, if no audit is completed, then the companies, Autel and DJI, would be added to the FCC covered list, which would prevent their equipment from being sold in the United States, uh, and well, which would prevent new models from being approved, essentially, to be sold in the United States. That is not a good thing, okay? Uh, if the executive order helps motivate the completion of this audit, then again, I say this is a good thing. We have been wanting to get this thing done so that we can have definitive proof or no proof of DJI's uh, risk and so we can move on as an industry and decide that uh, we can go forward, okay? And finally, the last one in that list of potential topics, and that's the one we know the least about, would be the Department of Commerce final ruling on something. Uh, we're not entirely sure what exactly the rule would cover uh, and if it's going to be an NPRM, a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, following the ANPRM, the Advanced Notice of Proposed Rulemaking that we we talked about a few months ago. Now, uh, this could cover DJI, we don't know. This could be just drones in general, uh, but, uh, and we also don't know if it's gonna be an actual final ruling where they're gonna skip the NPRM uh, step. So again, that's really the only one where Something could happen, we don't know. Uh, I'm sure some people know, but we don't. And so we'll keep you posted. I'm sure there will be more information. Uh, we'll create short content on this channel. We'll create uh, full videos as necessary as we become aware of this stuff. But uh, yeah, again, please don't panic. This is, these are things, don't read just headlines, read the details. Next up this week, we have some eyebrow raising news from Ohio. Uh, State Representative Angie King and Ty Matthews are pushing for a federal Defense Against Drone Act of 2025. Uh, get this, the proposed bill, which is called H.R. 1907, would allow homeowners to legally use a shotgun to disable a drone that's flying 200 feet above a property. Within 200 feet, I should say. Yes, that's right. 
200 feet, okay? That's roughly two thirds of the height of a cell phone tower. Uh, that's a very common altitude for all of us to be flying at. Why the push? The lawmakers are citing growing concerns about privacy, property rights, and public safety. Uh, Representative King pointed to incidents in her district where drones reportedly causing alarm, threatening livestock. Uh, pay attention to that one because I think you can probably read between the lines of who's paying the bills for uh, Miss King here. And then also for raising cybersecurity fear due to foreign manufacturer components, okay? Uh, she said that the growing use of uh, unmanned aircraft vehicles, UAVs, has led to serious concerns over privacy, property rights, and public safety, particularly when drones operate at low altitude over residential and agricultural areas. So this is their proposed fix for the local issues, is basically shooting the drones. Now for drone pilots, this is obviously a big deal. Uh, current federal laws are clear, shooting down at a drone is not a good idea, and uh, because it's an aircraft. And many of our operation, like takeoff and landing, uh, low altitude photography, inspections, you name it, are going to happen within that 200 foot zone. This could seriously impact how we fly, and quite frankly, that sounds like a pretty dangerous thing to do. Uh, looking at people shooting at drones in the sky. We know how bad people are at identifying what is actually a drone. So when is uh, somebody in their aircraft, actual manned aircraft, going to get shot at, killed, or whatever. So next up, Wing and Flytrex are teaming up. Uh, these are two companies that are usually competitors. So seeing them collaborate here is a pretty big deal for the drone industry. Uh, they're working together to share an automated air traffic and collision avoidance system. Now think of it like unmanned traffic management or UTM platform that would specifically be used for their drone fleets. The system is designed to let both Wing, which is owned by Alphabet here in the US, and Flytrex, which is uh, based in Israel, that's a startup that's been growing in the US, they would basically exchange real-time flight plan and navigation data. The goal here is to make sure that their drone can operate safely together in the airspace over the Dallas area without colliding, which is good, right? Uh, the technology will automatically adjust flight path to prevent drones from being in the same spot at the same altitude at the same time. Uh, Flytrex has already completed 200,000 deliveries and Wing says that they're on their way up to 450,000 deliveries. So both of them bring a ton of experience to the table, which I think is a good thing. This is, this is a good way to deconflict airspace. Finally, a real world Drones for Good story out of Washington state. Uh, this happened during Memorial Day. There was a group of teenagers that was hiking on Mount Sai, uh, which is near North Bend, Washington. And they found themselves in a pretty scary situation. Uh, they got stranded in an area that is called the Haystack. Uh, it's a steep, rocky scramble and they're definitely not a good place where you want to be stuck as the daylight fades. Uh, thankfully, the Seattle Mountain Rescue Team was on the case using their Matrice 4T from DJI. Uh, they deployed the drone, reportedly launching directly from the North Bend headquarters, and they were able to locate the hikers. This allowed them to assess exactly where the teens were on that 4,000-some foot uh, mountain. A volunteer for the Seattle Mountain Rescue Team, his name is Doug McCall, he said that uh, he highlighted that the the, the drone presence was critical to finding these kids. Uh, he also said that, and I quote, this mission allowed us to launch directly from our building. We were able to get up and peek in down on the north side using a thermal camera and locate the group just as the drone battery was about to return home. So big shout out to the team over there, the Seattle Mountain Rescue Team, and uh, great job on using drones to save even more lives. And we're going to be discussing this executive order that I mentioned earlier in more detail during post-flight in the premium community. So make sure that you join us over there. And in the meantime, we'll see you on Monday for live Q&A. And you have a great weekend. Don't be that guy. Go talk to your representative and all of the above. Mm -hmm.